Hey everyone, welcome to Board Game Essentials. My name is Kanai. Today, I'm going to be doing a vlog. I'm going to be talking about my Gen Con experiences. And also, you'll notice, this is not our normal recording space. That's because I'm in my house in Maryland. I had to move here for a job. Um, so I've been going back and forth uh, to do videos with Evan in New Jersey. That's where our recording space is over there. But I figure I can get some stuff done here. I don't have to do it all in New Jersey. So let's get started. So one of my first pickups at Gen Con was The Pursuit of Happiness, and it's by Stronghold Games. I'm pretty excited to play this one. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Life the game. Like if Life the board game was a little bit more interesting, and you didn't have like a roll and move aspect to it. So you play through uh, the beginning of your teenage years to all the way to old age. And it's a worker placement style, and you actually get to pick interesting jobs and form real relationships with whoever you want. Um, looks like a lot of fun. I can't wait to try that one. Then another one I got is Cry Havoc. Uh, like I said, I pre-ordered this one. I'm very excited to play this one. The components look great. I punched them out. I put together some of the bases for the miniatures. I probably want to paint these. <laughs> These miniatures look great. I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but these guys look pretty cool. I'm excited to paint them. Um, so, hopefully I can get this one to the table sooner rather than later. Another purchase I got was Potion Explosion, which I'm very excited for. Um, it's actually really cool. The is the contraption I was talking about in my Gen Con, top 5 Gen Con video. Well, I didn't have a picture of it, but now I have the real thing. This is what it looks like. This was the one-time experience that the rulebook outlined. So, it's pretty cool. So you just put the marbles in the top and they fill down. I really like this. Um, it rem you know, it's just the bejeweled gameplay where you get to pick them off and you cause chain combos. It's pretty cool. Can't wait to get this one to the table as well. The only minor thing I have is the inserts kind of, eh. It would have been cool to have all the marbles already, like, in the dispenser. And, you know, I can then prop it up. Also, these right here might be a little fiddly to sort. But those are minor complaints. It, the setup's probably not going to take terribly long anyways. So, let's see. What else did I get? I'm only showing you a couple of the board games I got. I'll probably put a picture up of everything I got. These are just some of the stuff I brought with me to Maryland to read the rule book and write some scripts for. The other one I got is City of Spies, another Stronghold game. I'm looking forward to this one. And what was nice about this one was all these components came punched out already. There was nothing for me to do. <laughs> so Kind of happy, kind of sad at the same time, because I love punching stuff out, but can't complain too much. Um, still need to read through the rulebook more on this guy. So, if we're going to talk about Gen Con, let's talk... Oh, I have one more thing to, I have one more thing to show. Now I gotta, got to pick up two sets of these warrior dice. These are really cool. So, like normal RPG dice are the D20... Um, the the D20, the D10, the D8, stuff like that. They actually come in the shape of armors. So this is like a, the D20 is a shield and you kind of just flip it in order to see what you get. And then, you know, this one's a punching gauntlet. This one is a dagger, I believe. It's a D4. This one, I think, is a mace. It's a D8. And this one, I believe, is a short sword, which is a D6. And what's really cool is I like the, the, the D12. It's a helmet, which is pretty cool. So I got these in two colors. It comes with its own mini game called Night Fight. Um, I don't know how this plays yet, but we'll find out. Hopefully it's good. So here's the other... Oh, I didn't open up the other black set, but maybe you could see that. So excited to use these dice because on the side I actually do play... Um, so I do play some Pathfinder here and there. So one of the surprises of Gen Con, for, for me, I was walking around the event hall. No, not the event hall. The exhibit hall. That's the one. And I looked, I looked and looked and I was like, within the first hour I saw this 
this crazy looking game and I was like what in the world is that so the game I'm talking about is walk on fire this is a small dexterity card game which you you use a use cards as spatulas and the players go around flipping ingredients on the walk so normally this I would have passed by passed it by because it's just a it's just a small box card game and I play those from time to time but they had this sweet whoop, upside down they had this sweet play mat <laughs> so this is what drew me into the game uh, I hope you guys could see this so the goal the basic premise of the game is you have these spatulas you're gonna be using these and there's gonna be ingredients face down on the walk kinda of like so and you're gonna use your spatula and the goal is to literally flip them like that and then you get two flips per turn and then you get to pick up whatever ingredients you found and it scores kinda of like Sushi Go where you kinda of want sets of things or you want certain items this game this game blew my mind I, I don't know what it is it's it's simple it's thematic and I, I'm a sucker for dexterity games so I think all those in combination uh, just drew me in a lot and as soon as I purchased this I think after the event hall no after the exhibit hall closed I was like guys we gotta play this game <laughs> so we played it like we played it five times um, and it plays really quick it only takes like 15 to 20 minutes it's it's super quick super awesome um, I, I expect to show this to everyone <laughs> I, I just can't wait to play more of this this is just this is just probably my go-to like quick game from now on I, I love it I can't get enough of it so far fantastic presentation great little game so um, now that I've showed you a little bit of my purchases and some of the finds I had Let's go over some of my Gen Con experience. So then we left we left Wednesday really early. We left at 4 a.m. from New Jersey and we drove all the way to Indianapolis. So that took about uh, 12 hours, maybe 13 with stops. Well, no, probably 12 hours. And so it was a lot of fun, you know, on a road trip. Um, we did that last year as well, so I was, I was used to the long drive. Then... Then we got there, it was tons of fun. On Thursday, we did True Dungeon. I don't know if you guys have done True Dungeon, but True Dungeon is this fantastic experience where you actually get, you actually gather a party of adventurers, uh, like, you know, re regular D&D characters, like a barbarian, a cleric, a, um, a ranger, a rogue, uh, stuff like that, and you go through there's there's two different ones there's like more combat oriented one so that's like that one's more that one's more role playing ish where you actually have foam weapons I, I believe I'm saying this right but we didn't choose that one we chose the puzzle one which is more where you use a shuffleboard in order to attack the enemies um, so you have this you have these circular discs and you place them into a slider so I would I would put my I would put a sword into there I was the barbarian I put my sword in there and I and I glided my slider on uh, on the shuffleboard and it had various um, hit so hit zones on the monster so there was like a rock monster and it was really weak on you know your sword didn't do much damage or didn't have a chance to hit on the on the areas they were labeled, you know, they were labeled. So whenever you, whenever you shuffle, whenever you roll that shuffle, um, for that shuffleboard, it's like actually rolling a D20, which is pretty neat. And they have weak critical points. So those are like the, you know, that's like the 20 on the, uh, 20 sided die. That was a lot of fun. And the puzzles, the puzzles were really hard. <laughs> uh, the first one, I won't spoil anything. We did the first one into the deeper dark. We didn't do the second one because we weren't sure if we were going to like it. Um, the, the first room was pretty easy. We got it. And then I believe the next room, or it's either the third, I think it was the third room where we were just, we were just stumped and we're like, what, what is going on? We cannot even get this puzzle right now. 
Um, but I mean, it was a blast. You still get to go. You still get to advance, even though you didn't, even though you didn't complete that puzzle. But then the rest, the rest was good. I did, I did something pretty, pretty awesome, which um, which I love. <laughs> so as my barbarian, there was a there was a final boss at the end of the cave, and it was actually our guide. Well, okay, I'm not gonna spoil anything. So. That part was awesome. Uh, I actually, on the very last round of combat during that, I threw I threw my disc on the shuffleboard and I landed a natural twenty with uh, my sling weapon. Sling weapons don't do much, but oh yeah, I got the last hit on that. <laughs> so it was very satisfying, and you get to collect some loot at the end, and you get to level up your character online. Not sure if this is something our group is going to be doing in the future. I am totally happy we did it at least once. Um, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll become a true true dungeon expert. <laughs> I I don't know. Board games are good enough for right now, but I will recommend that everyone does this at least once if they go to Gen Con. It's a little bit expensive. Um, it's fifty six dollars to do one adventure, but in my opinion, I, it's it's definitely worth the experience for sure. So other than that, I got to meet publishers. Um, I got to meet designers of games, and then I got to meet other reviewers and other Instagrammers as well. And that was a fantastic time. Got to hang out with the board game Renegade. Got to hang out with the um, Neverboard Gaming crew. They're just a fun, fun bunch of people. And let's see, what else did they do? So it was fun to, you know, get to see them face to face, take some pictures, uh, play some games, and. Oh, there's one, there's one more thing I want to talk about. So I signed all of my friends up for the, um, the Iron, the Iron Game Designer Challenge, which if you don't know what it is, if you've ever seen the show Iron Chef, it's kind of like that. So everyone breaks up into teams and they get the same set of components, like board game components, like cubes, cubes, a die, um, some playing cards, some blank playing cards, and... Uh, a notepad just to write some stuff down and then you have an hour to make a game so that was that was one of the more memorable experiences that I probably won't forget for a long time and I I might even want to do it some more so we actually made a game surprisingly I thought we were going to crash and burn I was I was I was looking over at Evan I was like Evan do I really really have to like leave the room in shame right now <laughs> because at the end of the hour you had to present your game to to your peers and and everyone else in the room i was like we don't we don't even have anything yet so so we made a game called no mushrooms now without going ter into too much detail there was an inside joke that we had where one of my friends said something and evan thought he said no mushrooms which was kind of bizarre in the context so i'll leave it at that so anyways, the rest of the weekend, we were just saying no mushrooms. And then when we were walking over to, when we were walking over to the room in which to do the iron game design challenge, we were, they were chatting and they were saying, let's make a game about no mushrooms. And I was like, <laughs> I start laughing. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that'd be funny, right? No, they were pretty serious about no mushrooms. <laughs> they just would not drop it. Um, so like in the first 20 minutes, we're like trying to debate on the title. Is it called No Mushrooms or is it called No More Mushrooms? And I was like, man, we are just not working on this game right now. <laughs> so that's fine. So we did it. We actually made a game. So it is a set uncollection game in which you guessed it. You don't want any mushrooms. So everyone starts off with the color mushroom and the the theme kind of like the loose theme is you're all garden gnomes and recently mushrooms have been outlawed in your city so you don't want to be caught uh by the cops by the by the gnome cop with any mushrooms and whoever so the goal is to just have the least amount of points at the end of the game so so like golf scoring and so everyone starts off with five cubes of their color in front of them, and then there's there's three basic actions. There was give it give a mushroom, take a mushroom, and switch two, switch any two, and then there was more powerful ones. Um, what were the more powerful ones? There was you could you can move the cop, you could. Um, 
I don't remember the other ones. But so, but after everyone in that turn, uh, after everyone takes a turn selecting an action card, then uh, what happens then? Oh man! <laughs> uh, if I had the rules in front of me, I'd remember. <laughs> so after everyone takes a turn, whoever has the highest amount of mushrooms not in their color has to bank them, and that's worth negative points. So for example, if I'm the green player, I would if I had three red mushrooms in front of me at the end of that round, then I would have to take those three out of the out of the game. And then I, that means that would count as negative three points for me. So it was it was kind of crazy. It's a very simple abstract game, but we were able to do it um, in that short amount of time frame, and lots of laughs and lots of laughs. Not yelling. It was, it was like it was pretend yelling. We were, we're all good friends. Uh, after all that, I didn't think we were gonna make it, but we totally did. It was fantastic. And then you know we did a presentation on it. And we could have other people play test our game as well. And people liked it. Um, that was kind of surprising to me. For, for such a simple game. And that, that kind of threw us, threw us for a loop. And we kind of... So this, was, this, this uh, game challenge was at 8 p.m. And we didn't leave that room until 10.30. And then even then, we went to the, the giant play hall area. The open play hall. And we ended up playtesting it more <laughs> over there because the set time for that event to end was 10 or 10.30. So we, were, so we all stood around each other and we're like, are we going to play some more No Mushrooms? <laughs> it was awesome. And then the following day, actually, so we got to meet our good friend Ian. He's another game designer. And he's, I would call him a more official game designer than, than us at the moment. <laughs> and before that, we had got to try out his, his new game. Um, and we got to give some good feedback on that. And we flipped the script on him, for sure. We said, hey, Ian, uh, do you want to play test our game? <laughs> so he got to play test it as well. He said, this is pretty good for just an hour. Um, we were quite impressed. So... Who knows? Uh, we're just going to mess around with the idea. Don't know if we're going to do anything serious with it yet. Uh, but that was that was certainly one, like, it's either, it's either True Dungeon or the Iron Game Design Challenge was my highlight of Gen Con. Can't decide which one. But I had a blast. It was amazing. Uh, how was your experience at Gen Con if you went? And is there anything that you want me to do first for the channel? Do you want me to do a how to play video for Cry Havoc, City of Spies, uh, Potion Explosion? I'm probably going to work on The Pursuit of Happiness. Probably going to do that one first. I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, maybe even Walk on Fire in between because it's a lot of fun. And does anyone have a name for this vlog? I'm trying to think of a fancy snazzy name for it. Um... Maybe I'll just call it just a vlog, but if anyone has any ideas, uh, let me know in the comments below, and maybe that will be the name of this. And I hope this is more of a regular thing. Let me know if you guys like this type of style, if you guys want to hear me tell stories, anything like that. I'd be more than willing to do more. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.